Hello, my name is Micaiah Stevens. Welcome to game design number five. We are uh, developing a game for Haven Studios uh, called Hamlet. It's available on Steam. Uh, you can uh, leave a comment or please clap. Uh, anyways, there's uh, def uh, definitely a lot of ways to contact us if you feel like uh, you, uh, you need to, uh, including leaving comments are probably the best for these YouTubes. Anyways, we're going to be talking about, uh, yeah, there we go with anyways, uh, for game design number five, it's uh, components. Uh, kind of could be the uh, overall uh, idea. Uh, part of that is uh, talking about through this ECS system, which stands for the Unity Component System for Unity for the 2019-ish and the future. Uh, then we've got a, a demo for you, but uh, before we get into the demo, we're going to be talking about some Combat Geo, uh, the Combat or the Combatant, and then we're going to be talking about the conclusion or next. And then we'll talk a little bit about Hamlet, of course. Uh, some components uh, by Makai Stevens. Hey, that's me, uh, i.e. Combat Geo. Uh, so we're in components. There's sort of this idea that, uh, you know, in some ways we have a, a JSON, which is just sort of a class. Uh, we call it JSON just because uh, we have the JSON utilities from Unity. Uh, it could be anything, XML, text files, anything. It's just sort of this class. Uh, and the class is usually denoted without... A scriptal object or a mono behavior, just a generic C sharp class, uh, and then we uh, often use scriptal objects to sort of represent those classes because we can pass them around, and this is sort of the extension of this uh, system. And then these often live on game objects where the mono behave themselves. So the uh, the the JSON is the class, which is the goal. Uh, the goal would be to sort of read the JSON into the scriptal object and put it on a game object. Um, and then sort of you kind of kind of think about that through the mono behavior, which is part of the game objects and scriptal objects and then classes and then down to the JSON. So it's kind of a one way to think about that. Uh, here we've got this uh, similar idea uh, where we have this uh, combat geo. Uh, the geo is just stands for game object. It's just sort of our our way to signify that there's some sort of combat uh, or combatant scriptal object. And it sits and it sits on this game object, which is the actually the view in the world through the mono behavior. It uh, seems to be how a good way to handle this through mono behavior. This is kind of the old way of doing things. The ECS is sort of this is akin to what sort of ECS is doing, but it's sort of not quite there yet, I think. Uh, anyway, so in this combat geo, uh, we can have things like combat health and combat status, uh, and then it's all driven by this combatant, which I believe, yeah, so we have this uh, combat geo, it just has these, uh, and this just combat health and status are just one of many components that we are talking about, and that's sort of where you get this entity component system, is that we're talking about this entity, which is a combat, and it has these uh, component systems that sort of drive this entire thing, so what is a combatant? Well, a combatant is uh, simply a, a combat, and that's why it's called combat geo, just a, a simple name, it's a scriptal object, uh, this is sort of the, um, the second stage of this where you have, it's not quite a, a JSON class, uh, scriptal objects are easier to pass around and they work better with this system. Uh, and so we just have this basic, and combat is just a simpler form. It's You can think of it as a combatant because combat could mean, you know, two people fighting or whatever. And that's sort of the gist of this game. But uh, anyways, we, uh, yeah, so we can see that, that we have this, uh, we keep a, a, a static of the player this is just for convenience sake, so we can just say combat.player and uh, find the player object uh, quickly. Um, we d often do this in various different ways. Uh, and it, all the combatants have a name, uh, uh, just signifies that they have a name, and then they have uh, each of the combatants have an opposing combat that they're in, they're in combat with, and then they have the stat manager, which is sort of their list of all their stats, and then the Q combat is sort of the link to the mono behavior that um, the you know the ways to set up combats and put together. So, uh, part of the the core of this component is the combat component. It uh, sits on a mono behavior. It often has to sits on a mono behavior because it's sort of in the scene, and it's sort of a a driven driven force of this combat, uh, which you know just combat combat, which is sort of this this data class item. Uh, and part of that is is through that uh, the combat geo is sort of the the uh, core component, the core idea of this whole thing, uh, it itself is a combat component, um, which is sort of it has access to the scriptal object combat, um, and it sort of manages all. It used to, you know, and this is kind of an older example here, where it used to, it, it 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 still manages all the combat components, which is just every single component on the thing, UI, um, whatever it is, 
Uh, we also used to have this rec with and pixel with are just the uh, just the the data of the class, or for the uh, it's the graphics of the class, uh, and we thought you know hey that would be a great example of the fact that we have this combat geo which is this has these uh, graphics components so we thought hey wouldn't it be just great to split this off and that's what we did we took this uh the combat graphics we just said hey we're working with the combat i always like to think of the thing as the combat because it keeps it in an ordered list of all the components combat geo is sort of signifying that it's a combat and then combat.cs or the comp combat script object anyway so we, we split that off into the combat graphics which is itself is a combat component which you can sort of fits right into these components so it eliminates these two fields drops them into this field and in this case we just say hey we need to get the combat dot pixel width and the uh, combat uh, rect uh, rect width which is kind of how you get the um, the width of the com you will see this all in the game uh, and part of the, so another one of these combat components could be the combat display uh, we sort of we don't need the sprite to display anything but it's sort of how you you click on something so it's not in use in this case uh, and then we we handle this through the eye pointer click handler which is just a unity's way of saying when you click on an object and then we say well what are we doing we're saying we're we're clicking on the stat manager which is sort of the stat manager is before is this stat manager is sort of the say it's sort of a combat uh, scriptable object but it's a stat manager scriptable object and the the, the uh, geo signifies that this is just the ui display of the stats uh and then we just say hey it's a singleton that's sort of the thing about these is like these are all this combat geo is like this entire you know player character with all these components on it and we still use script uh, uh we still use singletons in in part of in in conjunction with this system it doesn't eliminate singletons um, it just gives us a, a sort of a way to handle, and these are sort of these, um, like the uh, graphics, is, is, that's, that's the entire graphics component. They're just meant to be really simple um, core components that can be easily, like if the graphics are something wrong with the graphics, we know we can sort of go here and look at all the, um, the variables, all the whole two variables that are dealing with the, the graphics, and they often pull, um, they often pull from the data of the combat so it's like it knows since the combat component has a combat which is where it's reading this from and this is sitting on a mono behavior it's just pulling the pixel width and then feeding it in, into the actual pixel width of the um which then applies it through um it may not need it but it just gives us an idea to way to read the looking at the graphics component gives us a way to read that um the pixel width and then then we we the main core of this is the rec transform of the combat which we could maybe split off and do something different but right now it's sort of how it was working so um and then we're going to show you this eye pointer click handler which just passes in the stat manager uh, which is just the display of all the stats and we just say hey the combat selected is sort of what what comp what um, what combat person we're looking at we're not needing the entire combat component uh we're not leading the entire every single graphics component every single thing or in the actual physical game object, we just need to know the scriptable object, which we um, we set through the selected. Anyway, so I have a demo of this uh, over here. Uh, this is sort of a uh, this is uh, again a, a demo we sort of put together, uh, working with a uh, Ludum Dare 42, but then we sort of expanded this pretty pretty extensively. Uh, you can see that we have this uh, McCaven, which has is is his, is his combat name, and he has this uh, data display that he's 192 pixels away from the enemy, and the enemy is this uh, the it's just and that's the simple core setup of this is you have a combatant versus an opposing combat, and, and you can see on the bottom here we have this uh, stat manager geo which just lists out all their health, uh, their damage, um, some of the crit stites and stuff the you know just sort of the core. Um, the core things that they're doing um, and 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 you can also click uh, this is that these and that's sort of the thing here all these click all these uh, enemies have click handlers on them maybe they shouldn't have their um their timer and when they're anyways uh, their, their timer shouldn't go down when they're not in combat but but you can sort of see that uh, we're in um, we're, we're looking at enemy 11 which is sort of uh, we thought it would just be a really awesome idea to have in enemy names and that was included in the original project so we thought hey, it'd be cool and then um, you can also and then we also wanted to look at just various stats of these people um, you know why you know some people are like you know like this guy's really fast so he's like whoo um, 
yeah so I, there's yeah it should probably not be um involved in combat so and then you can sort of look through the um the uh where are we at here it's been a little while since I looked at this last. So you can look at the combat area, and we see that here's the combat geo, and then they have eight con eight uh, eight components, including their um, their display, the UI, their health, the status. And you can also see there's multiple dis combat displays here for various things, um, depending on what they sort of need. And then and then you can sort of see the combat UI has this these sub components which are these attack timers and various things which are just sort of driven by that as well so uh, the, and the combat UI could have these sub components as well uh, which is sort of the, and, and this is and then you can look at the Q combat uh, the Q combat let's see if I can find this quickly um, I didn't get this set up correctly but you can see the fact that um, Right here, here's the way to create the combatant. We just pass in a player. We instantiate the, the combat geo, and then we create the. Uh, we, in this instance, this is how we create the, um, the the data file. We can read it from a data file, but in this case, we're just creating them automatically. We need to know if it's a player, and we set up the uh, rec, um, transform, and then the the ability for the combatant to know, you know, what's the controlling object, and we init the uh, combatant through here, and we set the uh, game object through there. And then part of that is if you look into the combat geo, it's sort of it just it's very simple. Here's the combat component, which is just the combat. So you need to know that's why this combat over here in the Q combat that's setting up this combat right here, uh, right here. It's the combat geo is giving its starter component, um, and then we sort of set up you know various player objects and you know keep track of this through various means. Uh, and then part of that is looking at the combat geo. Once it has the combat, uh, the com the combat component, uh, this is how it finds all the components, subcomponents on the objects. We get the the combat components through here when we add it to a list, uh, and then we convert that into array because we are um, we're cool like that. And and then we go through once we have the uh, we actually go pick up the subcomponents as well, and then we um we d use this uh, system dot link I believe. Yeah, system dot link is to just anything that's distinct to pull out the very unique ones. Uh, we may have to mess with that a little bit, but that gives us this uh, idea of all the components we saw there, and we just need to set them up to the uh, components. And then one of the combat um, graphics we talked about quite a bit. You can sort of see that this is really simple. It just says, "Hey, it has a rec width and a pixel width," and it it just knows that it's um, right here. You can see the combat is the combat components uh, combat. And then it just sets up the pixel width, and uh, there is a slight bug. We sort of uh, we, this is part of the idea that you can scale up and sort of change some options. I think yeah, we have these uh, new menu options working on overall. But they sh this guy should be a little bit bigger, and that's why there's a little bit of space here. He should be up. So there's obviously something we can look at. But then we we sort of can look through the um, through here and then try to figure out why he's not scaling up correctly in some in some way. Um, He's not doing it correctly. So, but you should see how simple this is. And then we look at the combat display, which is just this idea that that in each of these, you can see each of these um, each of these uh, combat uh, components have are these combat combatants have um, they have a you know they just and they would just feed it and which is it's a combat component of itself and then it just implements the click handler and then we uh, we set the combat sprite to color to be the combat color just to sort of signify it's not really super important but it sort of gives us an idea i think it's sort of uh, uh some of these could be split off into different names anyway so then we just have this combat selected which is a uh, just a a way to say hey this is who's actually current selected and we just feed it in the current just just switch them out and it's that easy so it's just it's the idea of having these um these core components that are you know part of this simple the script and that's why the scriptable objects are handled quite are nicely because a, JS, a, a sort of a non-class wouldn't be able to pass data like this quick easily um, and maybe this is not how ECS does it per se but it's sort of a general idea of to just try to split off uh, we talked about I think in game design number one we talked about a, um, a, a first iteration of this we called it um, uh, what do we call that? Uh, it was like sort of, uh, you know, sort of, um, 
anyways, it was, it was a, a video that was talking about the, uh, that we have these, this core file, these core objects, and they had all these, you know, different t types of objects, you know, whether it was a building, whether it was a unit, or various uh, costs associated with it as well. Uh, so yeah, so this is as is, and this is really awesome where it's just it's it sort of splits off the um, like here you know this is kind of how we used to have it before we'd have this combat this is how we have our main Hamlet right now as well we have this unit geo and it has hundreds of data files with it and then it's like and then now we can just split these off this is kind of the a perfect example where you where it, and even in this this system where we had this all built before. We had this rec and pixel width that were part of the the combat geo, which is it makes sense because that's the combat geo is where it handles the display of the combat, but you can split that off into components, so it's much more. And then you can see how simplified our combat geo is. Is I think that's that's it. Yeah, that's that's the only thing it does is like we have the components, which is sort of just a convenient way to keep this in here, and then it just keeps track of all the components. And then that's it. And then it passes through the uh, tick combat. Yeah. So somehow. Yeah. And then we. Um, oh yeah. Oh, that's the other thing. I here. Let me show you this uh, demonstration of this real quick. Um, this is the the power of this system. And this, we actually added code in after the, we did a demo a promo of this. Uh, anyways, you can see the power of this system is that we we check out the components and we say where the components of the item. This is sort of a system dot link ability to say if it's not equal to null. We remove it. So we have these uh, this enemy. Let's pause. Um, you can see the enemy is displaying all their data. They're going, you know, they're doing all this stuff, right? But if we come in here and we come down here and we say this combat UI, and we remove this combat UI component, right? And you come down here and it says it's missing a component. We unpause, and now you can sort of see like the health is still updating. But some of the other stuff is like the, the, the combat UI is not actually updating, like over here. And then the same way for this guy, you can come in here, you can come down here, and you can say, let's remove his combat UI. And if he doesn't die in time, so and his, whole, his whole UI stops because he no longer has that component. And he, he see, like everybody else around this, these, this guy is working just fine. And then let's say... Um, that you see now that his health is working well let's pull, stop this guy right here where we're talking about this guy we have a health bar uh, and we're gonna say let's see we're gonna say combat health and we're gonna remove the combat health and now his combat health is no longer changing because we removed it it's like you can see our combat health is still dropping his is dropping and then you know is not dropping and then this one gets and that's sort of the power of the system because you know we can even go through and uh, I think I'm not sure how much we could actually remove without. Oh yeah, that would probably break the entire system. But, but, but you can't. Uh, oops. Anyway, so that's that's the, uh, the the cool thing about this system is the fact that these are are individual components, and often they they're not being forced to rely on. Like if we're not interested in displaying their health anymore, we can just remove it, and now we our health won't change. You can see our health is still changing right here, and the stats are still changing the health of the. Like here, see his health is 84. We switch back, and our health is now we're almost dead, uh, you know, because of these people that can attack really quickly. And it's like we're not, we're not getting any levels or any it's sort of a meant to test the combat systems. Uh, but you can see that our health is 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 still dropping because it's sort of in the background. It's the um, we can look at our our um, let's see we died. We can look at our our combat stats here, and it sort of shows all the stats of our combat and gives us a lot of this. Um, so you can see that that we can remove, and we couldn't do that in a in a in a in a core component like in our main game. We can't remove something as as crucial as that because it would break most of the systems. And you still can't remove the main um, core game object, but we could sort of think about it like that. Um, and then we could actually remove the combat graphics as well. And that you know, see that that's totally fine. The, and then this one sort of responds, and then maybe we can add them back in through some way. So that's just the power of this system and why it's so cool that it gives us the ability to remove these uh, components. Um, we could have removed the combat display, and then it would, uh, then we couldn't click on the component anymore. It would still update to the. Let's let's check let's check that out since we're talking about it real quick here. Is that we want to we are clicked on McCaven, 
but we want to remove his combat display, which is, where is that? I think we can just delete it. Yeah, here we go. So we can remove the combat display, which it should, yeah, it should continue to um, change the health. But then when we click over here, we, we get to this person, but then we can't click back over here because we don't have that component in me. The game's totally fine. It responds to everything else because they're fine, but this one's not, you know, we can't click. Oh, oh there we go. Somehow we clicked on this. I'm not sure why. Mm. Oh, I think when someone dies. Oh, there, there seems to be a right click. Yeah, so, so there might be a so there might be a different way to, to, to get access to that through a right click, and I'm not quite sure why. Oh, maybe because there's another combat display. Yeah, so there's another combat display right here. Yeah, so now we can't. Um, so there's two. Uh, so uh, this, this is a little bit of um, you could sort of um, add in some extra. I think it's through various ways of wanting to click on these objects, whether you click on the core object or click on but yeah so that just shows you the power of this system that gives you the ability to turn it off these systems um as you as you deem fit and sort of have the ability to um to uh change them on the fly which is really cool and then add them back in and we'd have to you know program that into somehow and um so that's i think it's just really cool so anyways we're talking about uh, components uh that these are sort of here let me see if i can find that <laughs> promo my own channel in my uh, YouTube video, but uh, I, I just, I don't remember the exact name that we called it, um, but uh, let's see, under videos, yeah, we're increasing our subscribers, yeah, it was called, uh, no, yeah, yeah, the strategy pattern sort of, so we had this idea that yes yeah, from sharp extent this idea that that we had these yeah you can see like we have these uh, these ideas of these characters they have various things they have tokens they have levels you can spend the tokens in training and then there's various and so we are adding in these components um, based on this system and I think is there a way to sort of and then you can I think in the lot of in the files let's see yeah you can see that they're they're just modules so they're at modules at the time which were called so we have this module the building level time token training unit and then um, the unknown module so it's like all this and that's sort of the extension of this system where you have these um this uh, oops i missed the unit geo here which is kind of where it, you know and that's sort of the idea that you know it's unit combat these are this could be applied to any number of different things uh and that's uh, it sort of fits into the the entity component system where you'd want to split these things off into components and sort of have these things. And um, this is probably a, a step in that direction, but we haven't quite worked with the entity component system. So we're sort of thinking about it. Uh, and it's just to, to, to clarify and, 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 and get these core components like the graphics, the display, the health, get it down to the very core. Um, you know, if we're, we're worried, if we're noticing a bug with the health, or we're noticing a bug with the combat. We can look at that very specific uh, component and try to see why it's uh, instead of looking at an entire um, unit as in our main game. So, so, so anyways, that, that's all based on this combatant, uh, which is part of a, a scriptable object. And then we eventually, what we'd like to do is next with this project is we still have to take the, we have it sort of working in a couple different instances, but we'd like to take a, a XML text file JSON a class read it into a, a scriptable object and sort of pass it around to all these um, components and then when we're done feed it back into the JSON to save it to the file and then um, and we think that would be a, a good system to sort of implement um, and then sort of the one of the next features uh, probably what we'll talk about next is uh, in game design number four we're supposed to be talking about time management we have a really awesome uh, time management system Oops, sorry, wrong one. Um, yeah, somewhere. Um, and we didn't include it in this system. Mm, very well. Anyways. Yeah. Maybe we didn't include it.
what it is. Anyway, there's all. Oh yeah, you know it's definitely. That's um. That's a system that needs to be implemented back into this uh, the core. Uh, this it's sort of this uh this project right here uh, we talked a little bit about it's sort of my it's going to be my implementation of implementation of 2D it's a data class uh, object is is this core functionality we're not going to have characters run around and and it's not going to be in 3D it's all going to be in 2D and it's sort of uh, so we're going to dump in some the time management and that into the project so that's going to be and anyway, so the next game design number six is probably, I, I hate to talk about these things, but I sort of have it ready to go. We might fit something else in by next Wednesday, um, but uh, that should be one of the next core function. you know, we could work on is this idea of this time management. Um, and that's part of, you can sort of see these combats sort of go off continuously and they're, they're based on the time frame. But, uh, you know, we have ticks and uh, days and months and years and various systems like that that we want to talk about. So that will be the next system. And then we'll see some extensions to this, um, to some cool extension to this, hopefully, and allow you to... Um, uh, we started a little bit that with that. You can click on the character and menus and swap through various things. But we'll hopefully have a much better system, depending. Anyways, that's in the next... Uh, 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 game design number six hopefully it's uh, tentative we'll have to see what it's called uh, and Hamlet's going we just uh, released a uh, today uh, on Monday we released the um, game design num or game our <laughs> woo, a Hamlet uh, de developer log number f uh, four I think it was and so yeah so hopefully we'll work throughout the week on that I'm not sure what we're going to do with there we these game designs are sort of they're taken they're pretty prominent because they are secondary projects we're working on and we're kind of talking about these ideas and sort of how to improve like um, the unit geo is part of the uh, the Hamlet and and we need to get into these combat geos and sort of split unit geos this massive we did split it off into uh, unit geo is now the, um, the the traveling component and then we also have a, a character component which is a start towards this idea but it has a long ways to go with that uh, so if you would like to please clap for us it's a, uh, a, a semi-political joke that's sort of, I was thinking about this, please, please leave a comment, but anyways, it's it's everybody, I just always appreciate your support, you can uh, talk about this Haven uh, Studios Discord, I think there's just a really slow way to do it, I think the Steam discussion page is one of the easy, easiest ways to keep track of Hamlet, or, or through this channel as well, so hopefully this will grow and people will, um, we'll have to see how we go from there. Um, I'm on quite a few discords, so it's like I, I feel like I'm already busy enough, and that's part of the thing is like if I get sort of, it'd be nice to get some feedback, but then it's like if I get, if I get too much into um, comments and you know talking about this stuff, it's like I have to sort of, you know, use my time wisely because there's only so many hours a day. Even if I work 16 to 20 hours a day, there's still only 24 hours a day that I have to get to. So anyway, that's the the design number four five. Yeah, design number five. So thanks very much. I'll see everybody next time. You take care.